and welcome back to the F2 show. I'm your host Fraser Ford and joining me to look ahead to this weekend, we have European Le Mans, WEC and former Formula 2 driver Bent Viscal, Inside F2 editor LA Wilshaw, and we have Inside F2 writer Lawrence Griffin. Coming up on the show then, we look ahead to the jewel in the crown as Formula 2 heads to Monaco. Monaco or Monano, we get our panel's take on the Monaco circuit and we answer your questions ahead of this weekend. But before we do all of that, Ben, great to have you with us. Uh, first of all, how are you? Very good, thank you for having me as well. I'm, I'm doing very well. No worries at all, glad to hear you're doing well. Uh, let's talk about your season so far, obviously taking part in the European Le Mans series, as we've said, you've also competed in the first round of WEC. Uh, how have you found it so far? Um, very nice experience, actually. Um, of course, I'm, I'm new to the world of endurance racing, uh, being in F3 and F2, F4, of course, for a long time. Uh, but I really enjoy my time until now, uh, and it's, it's only improving. Uh, so we finished second in our first race in the LMS, which was very good. Um, and the last race in Imola, actually, we had very good pace, but just not completely the luck that we needed in the full course yellow situations, which is, of course, different to single seaters as well. Um, so yeah, no, I'm I'm doing well and I'm enjoying my time in the endurance. Yeah, good. And you said pre-season that endurance racing, you know, totally different ball game uh, for you compared to what you've done previously. What what are the main differences between endurance racing, for example, and, and single seaters like Formula Two? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, as an F2 driver and as an F3 driver, the first thing, I mean, the majority of drivers usually complain about traffic. Uh, but after my first practice session in uh, in an LMP2 car with different categories on uh, on track, you kind of learn to not complain that much. I mean, if you get two clean laps in two hours of driving, then then you're really lucky. Um, so of course I had to adapt to this whole traffic situation, and um, you know you, you kind of see the fun of it after uh, after some time. Um, apart from that, I think the speed in the car is is very similar actually to an F3 car. It's it's a bit slower than an F2 car, but at least the tire drop off isn't as severe as on the F2 and F3 tire, which is which is nice to have. Um, and then of course the element of sharing a car with a teammate, and um, you know that's completely new to me as well because of course the setting up of the car is completely different because you need to make a compromise. You know what works best for the two of you. Um, so yeah, it's it's very exciting stuff, and again it's new, but it's but it's very nice to do. Yeah, good. It's a shame you can't tell people to get out of the way when you're, when you're approaching them, but uh, I'm glad you're, glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Le Mans coming up in a few weeks as well. Are you excited for that? Yeah, very excited. Of course, as a kid, you always, you, you know, you watch Formula One, you watch Le Mans. Uh, you know, I used to stay up all night as a kid to, uh, to watch it. Um, so to be driving there now is pretty surreal. Yeah, good. Obviously, wishing you the best of luck for that. Uh, LA, Lawrence, great to have you with us. LA, we'll, we'll come to you first. How are you? You okay? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Yeah, you know, enjoying, my, uh, enjoying the racing, enjoying everything. Yeah, good. Great to have you with us and we'll get your take on things in, uh, yeah, in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, Laura, so good. Anything, uh, anything to tell us? Not really. Um, I'm only just really recovering from from Barcelona, and Monaco is about to to come up. So, I didn't really anticipate that there would be so much going on in in Barcelona, really. So maybe Monica Monaco can um, surprise us in equal measure. Yeah, they come thick and fast, don't they, at the moment? So uh, we'll crack straight on with it then and talk some Formula Two. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look at the championship standings heading into round five. Felipe Dragovic's almost perfect weekend last time out means that he heads into Monaco with a 26-point lead over Teo Porsche. Jehan de Rubler and Liam Lawson will be hoping for stronger weekends this weekend. They're third and fourth in the standards. And Marcus Armstrong and Logan Sargent round out the top six. And the team standings? MP Motorsport remain the team to beat following their brilliant weekend in Barcelona. They top the standings 23 points ahead of ART. Difficult weekend for Prima last time out. They sit below Carlin and High Tech in fifth. And Dams round out the top six. And the full standings are available on our website, www.insidef2.com. 
Okay, Ben, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, yeah, I suppose, get your take on the season so far. When we look at those standings, completely mixed up, probably compared to, to what we're used to. Uh, what have you made of the, the season so far? A very exciting season, uh, if, uh, especially to see um, five different teams in the top five, I think. If I know all the names and teams well, of course, some of them switched from last year. Um, I think it's it's very exciting, actually, yeah. And in terms of, you know, MP, your former team in Formula 3, top, top of the standings, we haven't seen them finish entire inside the top five of the standings in the modern Formula 2 era. Why, why do you think that, you know, things are, are mixed up this season? And what, why do you think things are different? I think there's a very good reason for it. Um, you know, there's been a lot happening behind the scenes at MP, I think sort of since 2019, 2020, when I joined. Um, they've sort of reconstructed the whole sort of F2, F3 and also from a regional team um, and they've done a very good job at employing the right people at the right places so to see them up there now with a driver of the likes of uh, Felipe doesn't really surprise me to be honest yeah, really exciting for us because it means we got new new team at the top of the standings, which is good. Uh, LA, we uh, haven't had you on the show for, for a couple of rounds now, actually, have we? So, yeah, who, who stood out for you over the last couple of rounds? Well, obviously, you do have to say Felipe Djokovic. Uh, you know, it's, it's very obvious what he's doing at the moment with, with his season and with that MP car. That is is very clear that the team is, you know, this, there has been something going on in the background there because Clement is also having some some amazing races as he did as himself at the weekend, you know, being able to pick people off and fight his way. Well, not even necessarily fight, just, you know, pick people off and work his way up the field himself. So it's not a surprise that it's uh, it's a, it's a team and a car thing too as well as a driver thing obviously because we know that Felipe is an incredibly great driver he's shown that in previous seasons so definitely this season I would say you know he he, he has to be the one to watch doesn't he um but of course there are lots of others there are you could probably say all of them to stand out but I've got my eye on Jake you know Jake Hughes um with the car that he has He's having some struggles, some difficulties, even with the tyre issues at the weekend, tyre issues in previous uh, weekends. But you can quite clearly see that um, he's a championship winning driver. And given the right car or the right tyres or the right strategy, he could very easily be leading that, uh, you know, the, the championship himself if it were not for other things that have crept in and t t either taken those results from him or altered and affected his race. Um, and I've also kind of want to throw one more in here. Um, and it's Enzo, you know, it's Enzo Fittipaldi that is driving the wheels off that that Chiru's car that, you know, he's probably got no right to be finishing where he's finishing at the moment. But what they're doing um you know he's obviously not qualifying quite as well as he would like to and the team maybe would like to so he's not as far up the field but they're being a little bit clever with these alternative strategies and he's absolutely making those work isn't he at the moment yeah he's made a few mistakes and he's admitted that himself um and there, there has been car tire issues too but when when he can uh, put his foot down and get get himself going he's making it work as well so you know I'm really excited to, to see Enzo's season uh, you know fold out too so yeah yeah absolutely there's been some really strong drives so far this season hasn't there Lawrence let's talk about Felipe Drogovic we haven't obviously caught up with you since Barcelona uh, how impressed were you with his double win uh, and, and for you that weekend as a whole where does that rank for you? I asked this question to Luke the other day as well. Where, where does it rank for you in terms of the, the all-time best Formula 2 weekend? It, it was really, really quite impressive. Um, I think based on, based on the research that I did what I, from the races that I could find, I'd say it's, there's probably only two results that, that better that. Giovinazzi in Baku back in 2016 and Davide Valsecchi back in Bahrain all the way back in 2012. You know, we're going a, a decade back here to find more than one weekend that was that was better than Drogovic's. And the only reason for that really is that in both those cases, Valsecchi and Giovinazzi qualified on pole as well, which is the only part of Drogovic's weekend which wasn't as dominant. Um, you could potentially mark him down slightly for having held up Porcher in qualifying as well. Um, but after that, I mean, his, his sprint race start was epic and it made it into a really quite straightforward win once he got into the lead off the start. 
And that feature race was so impressive. He just kept going on those soft tyres every every lap. He thought he's going to come in, and he didn't. The team just just left him out there and said, "When you feel the tyres go off, you come in." They put a tremendous amount of trust in him, and he even said he was even got the call to come in, and he still didn't come in. And he actually decided, "Actually, I've got one more lap in me." Um, and then even on those tyres as they degraded, it's not just that he did a mega stint and that played out that he got fresher tyres at the end. Whilst he was doing that, his pace was better than a lot of drivers that were already pitted behind him. And it was just incredible to see how he was miles off everyone. Was it something that he was doing in terms of his driving style? Was it something that the team was doing? Obviously, we've spoken about how good Novelak was as well. He came through on the, on the soft tyres right at the end. And from a team's perspective, to do two completely different strategies so effectively on the same day is really, really impressive. Um, so I think both for the team and for, for Felipe particularly, it gives it must give them a lot of confidence moving forward. If they can keep performing at that level, um, then they, you know, at the moment they look odds on for the title. Obviously, it's much more complicated than that, but they're putting themselves in a great position. Yeah, exactly that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not very often we see any driver do the double, is it? Um, so, and I'll tell you what, if anyone does it this weekend, they deserve an instant Formula One drive, don't they, around Monaco? Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's very unlikely to happen. Ben, you obviously uh, know Felipe. Uh, you you were his closest competitor, actually, in Euro Formula uh, Open back in 2018, weren't you? How, how tough a competitor is he? Oh, he was very tough. I mean, I mean, he is still very tough competitor. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, once he get dialed, when it, once he gets dialed into the race, he's uh, he's very consistent and very fast. So um, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised to see him do these kind of things. Are you expecting him to see well to see him in, in Formula One? Do you think that's a possibility for him? And why don't you think that he's associated with a Formula One team? Is is that is that a sponsorship or? or... I think it has many reasons, and and one of the reasons is um, if you want to join an academy, it also needs to make sense for you personally. Um, look at the position he's in now. I think it's more of a benefit for him to not be in an academy now, just because he has the choice. Um, so of course, many people say you have to be in an academy, but looking at it now, I think it's it's fair to say that he's in a very strong position, not being an academy driver. Yeah, we'll see how things go for the rest of the season and uh, yeah, going into next season. But he's definitely in a in a strong position. Okay, uh, Monaco, uh, obviously a track that you know from last year, Ben. Uh, what were the challenges of a, of a track like Monaco? Obviously, other than the fact that there's walls uh, two meters either side of you uh, everywhere everywhere you're going. But what what are the main challenges of Monaco? Um, well, for me, last year it was a, especially a challenge because it was my first time on a street track in an F2 car in Monaco. So it was a very difficult one. Uh, I feel like with these 18 inch tires, um, that it's very difficult to see the walls just because they're so big. Um, I think that's the, the main challenge. And uh, I think mentally it's pretty hard, but at the same time, you don't have time to let your brain go some sort of direction that it doesn't need to go. So in that sense, it's probably easier to keep focused than on a track like Baku, for example, where you have a straight of two kilometers. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are a lot of challenges, but in the end, I think it's one of the best tracks to drive a race car around in the world. We have a, tw uh, a, qu a question from Twitter uh, at Milo Collins 54 wants to know, has out, well, in your opinion, has Formula One and Formula Two outgrown Monaco? Uh, and if you could alter the track layout to allow for more overtaking, what changes would you make to make sure that it's not a bore fest every year? I don't think Milo is a fan of Monaco, Ben. Uh, what, what, no, what do you... I, I don't think so. No, I mean, um, of course, it's it's very hard to change the circuit just because, you know, it's such a small, well, country or city, whatever you want to call it. Um, maybe if you want to improve overtaking, you could cut the chicane um that's after the tunnel so i don't really know what corner that is but i think we all know out of tunnel you know you have this slow hairpin um if they could somehow make a slower corner in the first let's say corner after this chicane so if you just go straight and then make a tighter corner afterwards it might improve overtaking it might not uh, but then again drivers will probably be 
too fast at that point uh, arriving if they cut the chicane. So I think there are a lot of safety concerns there as well. Do you, if, if you, if you're in charge of the calendar, would you have Monaco on the calendar? Or not? from a driver's perspective, drivers love it, don't they? But from a fan's perspective, can you understand that it can be a little bit, a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I suppose it, yeah, and sometimes it can be a boring race. Yeah, but I think being an F1 fan, being an F2 fan, as we all are, I think we can all, you know, rate the performance the drivers do on a Saturday afternoon in Monaco. You know ringing out every last bit of the car, you know, being so close to the wall, I think is much more of, of an exciting thing about the Monaco. I think the Saturday is more exciting than the Sunday in Monaco, that's for sure. But then the Saturday, I think, is one of the best days in the calendar as well. So I would definitely keep it on the calendar just already because of this. Yeah, 100%. It, it doesn't necessarily always have to be overtaken to be entertaining, does it? And you're right, absolutely fresh. And a Formula 1, Formula 2 car around is uh, it's a different form of entertainment, but it's definitely still entertaining, isn't it? Uh, LA, we saw the, the rookies have a, a good weekend last time out. Uh, four rookies on the podium uh, across the two races, uh, maybe because they're you know more familiar with the, with the Barcelona circuit. Um, as we head into to Monaco, obviously, uh, they might not know it so well. Um, do, do you think that we might see a return um, or the more returning experienced drivers uh, perhaps come to the forefront this weekend? Well, I, I kind of think that was a bit bit arguable like probably most races um because if you look at last season uh you know sprint race one there was the the three experienced guys there um but then if you look at pole position which you know Teo Pusher got pole position and then he went ahead and won that feature race uh you know he won that we had Liam winning despite the qualification as a rookie uh Piastri was on the podium as well in the sprint race two and the feature race. Uh, so so I sort of say no, really, because it was a mixed bag last season and those guys didn't weren't necessarily greatly, you know, familiar and certainly not in a Formula 2 car. Um, they, they weren't familiar with that with that circuit. So same goes for, for the rookies this year. You know, it doesn't mean to say that they're not going to do well just because they haven't driven it in a Formula 2 car before. Um, and, and again, you know, I totally agree with what, what Ben said. There's there's no way they should disappear from the calendar. And what you just said, you know, it's entertaining for maybe other reasons. But I also think in Formula 2 compared to Formula 1, there there are more sort of cheeky moves and cheeky opportunity, you know, overtaking opportunities available to Formula 2, whereas Form F1's a little bit more uh, difficult they get a lot more spread out because of the the engines and because of the cars whereas we all know f2 everyone sticks sticks together pretty tightly um and there's lots of room for pushing people and forcing people into errors because they're, they're a lot closer um so yeah you know it's definitely should stay 100 it's the it is the reason except for Ayrton Senna uh, that I got into Formula One when I was a young teenager and um <sighs> It'd be devastating if it if it left the calendar from my point of view because it's the reason why I'm here sitting here with you guys today. So, yeah. We definitely want it to stay then, if that's the reason, LA. Absolutely. Uh, Lawrence, uh, tyre deg uh, is quite low around Monaco, not as much of an issue. Uh, would that be something that the drivers, oh, I suppose they're glad about it, aren't they? They can push the, push the yeah, tyres a little bit definitely. more. Yeah, um... definitely. And for, for many of the drivers being held up behind somebody else when you're a bit quicker, which, you know, we, we see so often around Monaco, they won't need to be really worrying about their tyres at all. They'll be waiting to, to try and get the performance out of the tyres. Um, I think for some drivers in particular, they'll be thankful for that. You know, Jake Hughes, of course, as we've already mentioned, has, has struggled with with tyre deg, just the, the tyres falling off throughout the race in Barcelona. But then also... I noticed on his outlap, he seemed to get going really quickly compared to other drivers. So maybe he's lighting up those tyres really well, but not quite managing them throughout the course of the race. Um, so, you know, maybe that can that can make a, a big impact in the feature race, potentially that in-lap, outlap section is so important around Monaco. Um, so that could really play into his hands and, and it would be great to see him get a good result and capitalise on the pace that we know that we know um that we know he has um but you know it's the same conditions for everyone it's a it's a unique circuit so it's really hard to predict exactly how different drivers are going to fare with the tie deck and also tie deck might be even less of an issue if there's rain which is currently forecast on saturday and sunday 
so that could completely throw a spanner in the works. You know, we've seen a wet Monaco race before and seen how sort of edgy and tense it is with the you know possibility for overtakes. Um, it's there, but it's you have to give each other full respect as Piastri gave to Liam Lawson in that wonderful move through Raskas last year. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really quite hard to know what exactly is going to going to happen. Monaco in the wet. That's a yes, please from me, um, Ben. You know, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about tires and you know the boring the boring topic as it is. But you know, the tires obviously better than what we know them. Um, it is and the tires. I think Lawrence has already alluded to it. The, the more you push them on the outlap, the 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 more they degrade as the uh, stint goes on. Is that right? And it's all about kind of you know easing them into the stint. Um. Yeah, sort of. I mean, um, I think it's better to be at 98% in the outlap rather than be at 101 because the top layer of rubber, I mean, if you go over it too quickly, um, you will overheat the tire, you know, quite easily because, of course, the core temperature is not quite there yet. And if you're stressing the surface too much, uh, yeah, it, it might damage the tire quite a bit in the in the let's say, later part of the race. Um, but then it's a compromise because you can also win and gain a lot of time in your outlet because if you're too cautious, you might lose like three seconds just by being overly protective on the tire and getting three seconds back over 10 laps, you know, it's 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 quite a lot of lap time. So, uh, you know, it, it's very hard compromise to make. Um, but I think on a track like Barcelona with the temperatures they had this weekend, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, but if we see Monaco in damp conditions, for example, <laughs> that was uh, very tricky last year to get them up to temperature. And that's 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 a lot more harming for the tires than than it is when they are on a I don't know 50 degree track. Um, so I I probably think that will be even more important in Monaco than it will be in Barcelona. Yeah, really interesting. Tire talk from Bent Biscow. There you go. That's why Bent is a Formula 2 driver and uh, I stick to, to go-karts and hitting cones when I go go-karting. So uh, we'll move on quickly. Um, LA, uh, Terry Porsche um, became the, obviously the youngest winner in Formula 2 history last season at Monaco. Uh, presumably, well, he'll be looking for the same weekend, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you can probably say that it can be argued that he, he well, he's not from far down down the road, you know, and it was his home local race in a way. But um, I don't necessarily believe that he's probably, you know, ragged a car around the streets of Monaco uh, during normal times <laughs> with him being so young and so youthful. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like he'll go into this weekend. Um, it, it's not just even with the psychological advantage of winning a race there it, it's that experience you know it's having that experience under his belt and you know knowing pretty much where he maximized himself and his car last season and where he can do it again this season um we all we all know whether it's f1 f2 f3 that that pole is key pretty much around Monaco you know it, it is very important especially in our in the sprint race for us where there's no uh, pit stops um feature race obviously is going to mix up a little bit isn't it because we do have that and strategy can come into play but unless it rains um it's whoever's at the front for sprint race it, you know we might as well say it might as well end that way who knows but Say, oh, you know, come on, lad, you know, let's go, let's not let Felipe run away with this championship just yet. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, he's my, he's my driver this year, is Teo. I've, I've backed him to win. So uh, he needs to win at least one of these races uh, this weekend for sure. And uh, if he can't get pole um, position, then he should then think about maybe uh, finishing in 10th. <laughs> and then he can, um, qualifying in 10th. <laughs> and then he can at least get that sprint race. <laughs> exactly that Jehan J- Derubler as well obviously another championship contender uh, incredibly lu- unlucky uh, last weekend uh, but he looks like he's you know pace has been good didn't it he looks like he's really found the sweet spot in his uh, Prima now yeah he does yeah I mean obviously the, the Prima doesn't uh, look as handy as it normally does um, you know they're, they're not dominating like they have done in, in previous seasons which is great for the sport it's you know it's obviously great to see even though it's not, not so great for Renault 
DNA in the team there. Um, but he he's making it work as well as he can, isn't he? I mean, he's had three podiums now uh, so far. Um, that second, third, and another second, I think he got, didn't he? Um, and he's third in the championship with 41 points. Um, yes, Felipe is 86. It's almost double. Well, it's more than double. But we all know there's plenty of points available in Formula 2. Plenty of time to catch up. Uh, you know, we even watched last season how Robert did towards the end, towards the latter stages of the championship um, to, to gain all those points and to, to almost, you know, definitely be in contention to have, have won the crown himself. So we're so early in the season, aren't we? There's plenty of time for Jay Han in his Prima car for sure. And, and Lawrence, there's, there's probably a bit of a bit of pressure ramping up on a couple of guys, Yuri Vips, Liam Lawson. They need to have strong weekends this weekend, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, both of them have have suffered a bit of misfortune and a mixture of of some some driving errors. Um, and you know, Liam Lawson had a really tough weekend. Just didn't have have the pace in in, in qualifying. Is his worst qualifying of the season. Um, and of course, Yuri Vips, he you know he had he had that radi- that mistake in the first in the first race um crashing out and he sort of says i i keep being over aggressive i need to stop doing that and after after qualifying on friday he says that he's completely changed his mentality that he's now going to focus on being consistent in those sunday feature races he said that he was, he was going to be aggressive in the in the saturday race um because it's less there's less risk there because there's less points available um, but then he was going to be more measured on Sunday, and that that that's how it was going until, of course, he had that slow pit stop. Um, and and for Liam Lawson, yes, he needs to he needs to ha- hope for a, a good weekend because he seemed in the opening rounds to have the pace um, to be up there. But all of a sudden, the performances that Porcher and particularly Drogovic have had, all of a sudden he's quite a long way behind. Obviously, it's a long season; a lot can still happen. Um, but they they will both be desperate for for good results. Yeah, we'll see how they get on this see this weekend. Even uh, qualifying, obviously, incredibly important at Monaco uh, due to the lack of overtaking opportunities. So uh, yeah, qualifying is going to be uh, a good one on Saturday, as we've already touched on. Because of that, I thought I'd come up with a little game for us all to play. If you're up for it, uh, really simple. You have to guess who out of the teammates has come out on top so far in their qualifying head to head. Is that something you guys are up for? Sure thing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, and you guys at home can play along as well as we're going through. So, Prima, we'll start with them. Who has qualified or out qualified their teammate the most? Is it Dennis Halga or Jahan Daruvala? La will come to you first. Um, I don't know, Jahan. Jayhan, uh, Lawrence, who are you going for? Yeah, it's got it's got to be Jayhan, hasn't it? You're going to surprise me now and say it's how we go for. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Jayhan as well. Oh, no correct answers there. But it was actually a draw. They it's two all between the two of them so far this season. Uh, okay. uh, which is uh, yeah, I was a bit surprised. We're not allowed trick questions. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, the next one might be a bit easier then. Virtuosi, Jack Doohan or Marino Sarto, LA? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Lawrence? Well, well, you could put pretty much anyone after Jack Doohan and the answer would still be Jack Doohan, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ben? Yeah, we'll go with Jack as well. Yeah, Jack Doohan. Yeah, 3-0 to Jack Doohan. Uh, the only race... Uh, so far this season was when he was excluded from qualifying in Saudi Arabia, so we didn't count that one. Uh, Carlin, Liam Lawson or Logan Sargent, LA? Uh, Liam, I think. I'm pretty sure. I've got a feeling it might be Logan Sargent, but I'm not sure. I'll go. Well, I'm going with a draw then, uh, you know. Oh, you we've got one of each, one of each. It's actually Logan Sargent has out-qualified uh, Liam Lawson 3-1 uh, so far this season. That was one that surprised me, but Logan Sargent in really good form uh, for the last couple of races. Uh, high Tech, Marcus Armstrong or Yuri Vipselle? Um, I think Yuri started above uh, Marcus, so yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, I'm going to go Yuri. Yuri. Lawrence? Ben? Yeah, I'm going to go Yuri as well. Yuri, yeah, clean sweep there. Uh, ART, uh, Frederick Vesti or Theo Porsche, are they? Um, oh, God. Um, is this another trick one? Um, 
LA's really feeling the pressure here, aren't you, LA? You're not enjoying it. I am. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Teo. Yeah, right. Te Teo, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Pushio. Yeah. It's actually two all. It's a draw between those two so far this season. Teo Pushio had a um, bad qualifying in Saudi Arabia, and then Frederick Messi out qualified him this weekend. Uh, MP, LA, uh, Drogovic or Novelak? Yeah, it's got to be Drogo. Yeah, yeah Lawrence. Yeah. Ben. Yeah, Drogovic as well. Yeah. Four, four nil Drogovic in that one. Campos, Oli Caldwell or Ralph Boschong, eh? Oh, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. Lawrence. Ben. I think it's three nil, right? Three nil to Ralph Boschong. Spot on. And the uh, the weekend that Ralph Boschong. Uh, didn't out qualify and was obviously Barcelona where he didn't take part in this weekend so he's uh, out qualified Oli Caldwell in every race uh, a few more Dams uh, Nasani or Awasa LA yeah I'll go at uh, Rye yeah Lawrence I'm struggling here but I'm going to go I'm going to go with Nasani Ben I'll, I'll go with uh, Iwasa Awasa it is, 3-1 to Awasa, so Ben Ben's doing well here. Wait, when uh, I give my answer, you need to praise his face because he's not got a good poker face. So when he responds <laughs> to me, watch <laughs> I need to work on my poker I'll, face. I'll watch it now. <laughs> uh, Trident, your former team, Ben. Uh, LA, who do you think? Uh, Vashore or Caelan Williams? Caelan Williams. Um, I think it's Richard. I think it's Vashore. Lawrence? Staring at Fraser now. Um, I'm going to go with for sure as well. <laughs> ben? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Richard. It is your fellow countryman, Richard, for sure. 3 1 on that one. Uh, Sharus, Enzo Fittipaldi, or Chembolic Bassi? Hello. It's Enzo. I think he's, yeah, he's we'll... outqualified. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we've had plus Chem's races, but obviously, he still had a teammate, so I still think it's Enzo. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. It is 2-0 to Enzo Fittipaldi in the, in the two races he's done. But he was out-qualified uh, this season by David Beckman when he stepped in in Imola, which uh, surprised me. Uh, finally, uh, VAR, uh, Hughes or Henri Cordil? Hello. Yeah, it's Jake. Jake Hughes. Yeah, Jake Lawrence. Hughes. Ben? Yeah, yeah I'm going to go with Jake as well. It is indeed, yeah. It was 4 0 to Jake Hughes in that one. And a bonus question Who is the highest average qualifier this season? Hello? Um, average. Um... Could come in very handy this weekend. Um... I'm going to have to push you for time, Hello. I'm going to have to push you. Yeah, go on. I don't know. Um, I. I... I feel like I want to say Felipe, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm questioning my own knowledge. No, I'll just say Felipe. I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking that as your answer. Lawrence? I've, I've got a feeling Felipe has not had brilliant qualifying so far this year. Jack Jack Dewan's got a lot of polls, but then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Dewan. But I've got a feeling he might have a couple of them down. Yeah, if we're not counting the one he got excluded for, then I think Dewan as well. Is indeed Jack Doohan is the highest average qualifier this season, and obviously this is the weekend you want to be, uh, yeah, qualifying well. So uh, he may well be the man to watch this weekend. Uh, thank you for participating in that, guys. I appreciate did, that. Did you keep and that's all. Did you keep? Did I didn't. Ben win I didn't. Did I, I tell you what, I'll get producer James to count them up. Uh, we'll get the uh, scores out, uh, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll pop, we'll pop it on Twitter. If Ben's won, then he'll find out on Twitter. So uh, okay, that's right. Yeah, we'll be uh, be looking forward to that. Keep, keep an eye out, Ben. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all we have time for today. My thanks to Ben, to LA, and to Lawrence for joining me on today's show. And thank you to you guys at home for watching as well, watching on YouTube, listening as well. If you've enjoyed the show, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more Formula 2 content and get involved in the conversation as well. Hashtag the F2 show on Twitter or just let us know in the comments on YouTube. Drop a comment below and we might well use your comments in future videos. But from me, Fraser Ford and all of us here at Inside F2, we'll see you next time.